Hey, welcome to Retro Tech. My name is Steve, and it's been an awfully long time since we've done any type of a vlog video here. And so I decided that's what we're doing today. We're gonna go on a trip. We're gonna go to the Retro World Expo and check out this convention. So before we do that, please do me a favor, hit the like button for the algorithm, and let's get ready for the trip. All right, so I've got my stuff all packed up here, and this is what I'll be bringing this year to the Retro World Expo. All right, so down here, just a quick look. I've got my wonderful BK467 analyzer. I've got a BVM D9. I've got some amazing tools, consoles, and oh, sorry, the manuals, of course. The manuals for the B&O MX5000. They're gonna go back to their owner, as well as the B&O MX5000 CRT. That's right here. And the owner of this is picking this up from the Retro World Expo convention. So we'll be able to take this with us, get rid of it uh, while we're there at the convention. All right, I'm also bringing my lovely white KV9 here, which everybody loves. I've got a Sony 9L2 here, some cabling so I can steal power from somebody. And I will bring a jam box to listen to some tunes all right, I've got all my gear ready, but my vehicle is not ready. We're gonna go rent a car for this trip, and uh, it's a pretty interesting place. We have to pick this car up. I just can't rent a car in my town here. I have to go to the Cornfield Airport. Well, here we are in the middle of cornfields, and we're about to be at place I have to go to rent rental cars. All right, here we go. We're turning in to Cornfield Airport. That's right, we've arrived in the Cornfield Airport here. And now I can pick up my rental car. All right, I was able to get that awesome van here from the rental place. So this lovely hybrid brand new minivan is now loaded with all our gear everything we need to take with us crts the big ones tied up to the back of the captain's chair in the middle row uh, with a rope and a bunch of other stuff hopefully everything makes it there now let's hit the road to connecticut <laughs> man i just survived a seven and a half hour drive through the northeast and the van is still here let's make sure nothing broke so it looks like everything's good We'll have to check this later. This is the B&O. I think it's fine though. All right, welcome in. This is the first day of the Retro World Expo. We're a little bit before the actual expo opens to the public. So we're gonna get a chance to go around while it's still calm and uh, check out some things. I wanna show some of these cool vendors that uh, I found just walking around. There's one guy who has an amazing CRT set up. I just have to show you guys this. So check this out. This is from Retro Games Plus. How cool is this video wall? You guys just love, I love this. KV9, it's lovely Panasonic. And this guy, his name's Steve also, but he, he loves these consumer sets. Maybe if he's in the booth later, we'll come talk to him. Very cool. MGA Mitsubishi, look at that one. You are watching a Laserdisc. Look at that, Laserdisc demo. And this might be the coolest uh, CRT I've seen so far. Look at this Toshiba. Um, the FST Black Stripe. And check this out. If you push this, look at that. The remote comes out. How awesome is that? I absolutely love that TV. So, I'd say it's about 20 inches. 
And up top, we got a cool little Magnavox. This is a Panasonic. Kind of looks odd. Mr. Rogers. Very cool, huh? So that's right next to the main entrance here. How awesome is that? Right when you walk in, you can look to the left and see all those great CRTs. Let's check this out. This is cool. Got a bit of a museum here of old, old items. Oh, look, this is for Roger. Look at that. Eat your heart out. Look at that one. The Nintendo. Channel F. Very cool. I've never seen a Studio 2 by RCA. What about this Bailey's home computer? It looks like some kind of gambling machine. Look at that. Look at that businessman. <laughs> awesome. Uh, there we go. We knew there'd be a CRT in the museum. The Vectrix. Very cool. Before the show opens, let's go see what else is going on. Oh, look at this. This is cool. Some painted TVs. Look at this. <laughs> Look at that. How awesome is that? All those converters. That's hilarious. Nice JVC down there. Oh, cool. Ultimate Gamer Challenge. They, of course, have CRTs up there. Some more CRTs. Oh, this one looks nice. People are always asking, what's a good, look at that good flips, nice sharp signal. Here's another one, Sylvania. This is where they're gonna do a Tetris tournament or something. Look at this old JVC, what's this one? Oh, good, how you doing? <laughs> well, I'm more interested in the ta in the tubes. Oh, the CRTs. Yeah, that's what I work on. Okay. Yeah. All right, so we're over here in the um, arcades, and then like retro gaming setup here, and um, we're gonna look at one thing before everybody gets in here and it gets too crazy, um, because that is this. Look at this. With the original OEM stand. Let's turn this on and see. Ooh, yeah. Can you see down in there? Probably not very well. Look, it works. There it is, Virtual Boy. Radio Tennis, can you see it down in there? Very cool. So that's definitely awesome. So we got arcade machines here. Obviously, we got a lot of CRTs. I love this one. Crystal Castles. It's just got such a cool looking cabinet. Especially when you get this Atari part right here. Oh, the Tempest. Some Stern pinballs. Oh my, somebody brought... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven candy cabs. Holy moly. Oh man, look at that. Those are beautiful. Oh look, I found some PVMs. 
and some circuit boards. I bet Dell knows what's going on with this. So we'll meet up with Dell from Delusionals Arcade here in a little bit and we'll see what's going on with those PVMs. But just a lot of great machines here and uh, they're literally about to turn, turn the lights on fully and open the doors to the crowd. I love pinballs. Well, it's only been about 20 minutes and Bob's already got me working for him here in the booth. We're starting on his 14L5 that uh, you can tell it's got a gash here. Is that gash? So the first thing we're going to do is remove this overlay. But I forgot my uh, knife. <laughs> so Bob has to go find a knife and then we're going to remove that overlay and actually transport some boards in here too that aren't working. <laughs> Come on, baby. Come on, baby. When I first started doing it, it was like every week. It was fun. Like, I already keep up on things. It's not like it was extra. Oh. Yeah, that shit's work, right? Look at there. Oh, so te technically. We might, I just. Oh, no! Don't worry. I just got another side. <laughs> We're taking two uh, two PVM 20L or 14L5s and making one working one out of them. And now this one, we're just removing the um, project for tangible. Uh, Why not, right? Make ourselves useful while we're here. Here we go. Let's get the other side off and not, not cause any more trouble. Oh no! Uh, <laughs> this is a uh, first time for me. I've heard that before, Steve. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Thank you. All right, cool. Nice. We did get a little residue, though. Uh, a little bit of goo gone, and you're totally fine here, so. It's all right. The, the scratch is gone. <laughs> oh, so you're just taking the scratch off? Yeah, it had a scratch in it. They make, does anybody make a replacement, or is it just plastic you can get? It's so, just, you don't really need really it. It's just... Yeah. All right. Well, that's step one. All right, everybody. That's unfortunately all the real footage I had from day one. Uh, after we got done removing the overlay on the 14L5, I had to open the back of the setup and actually get the main chassis or board out of there because there was an issue that we just couldn't figure out. And Bob had a replacement board from a salvaged unit so I was able to install that and thankfully after installing that I did get the PVM to boot up and it worked it worked perfectly and no longer displayed any of the issues and here are some photographs of that PVM working and looking great uh, I do want to thank Chris aka the Displaced Gamer for helping me with some of these pictures you see and also Lou from Lou's Retro Source, uh, both in the booth and helped out with some photographs. Okay, after that, we moved on to a 20 inch consumer CRT television that Bob had brought in. I think it was an RCA or a Panasonic. And we hooked up the BK467 tube tester to it, uh, did a tube analysis. Actually, the green gun was a little bit weak, so we cleaned and balanced that line uh, live there for everybody but unfortunately I couldn't find any photographs or pictures or uh, videos of that uh, but it was a fun process and there were some people that are probably watching this video that got to see it live in person uh, but that's pretty much it for day one after that was all done uh, the booths kind of closed up about 6 p.m. and we went back to the hotel and uh, had a little fun and then got up and got ready for day two well, somehow Bob suckered me around into staying a little bit longer than I had planned to. So I'm here on the last day 
and uh, it's real early in the morning. It's about an hour and a half before the convention opens, I believe. Um, the only problem is I'm trying to work on some more stuff for Bob, like these D-Series 9-inch BVMs. Um, but I'm having a hard time concentrating because I'm tempted to just go jump on this amazing NBA Jam cabinet. And uh, the, what makes that one so special is that it actually has like the Jordan ROM hack. So you can play as Michael Jordan, you know, in that version that they've hacked together. Uh, but so I'm having a real hard time concentrating, but I'm going to try to fix this BVM D9 for Bob. So frankly, I can get out of here and get on the road because I got to drive all the way back to Virginia today and return that rental van uh, that's full of CRTs now. So I'm going to get back to work and then I'll be back in a second and we'll do one last roundup of this uh, amazing convention center and then we'll probably get out of here. All right, so for day two, uh, I did get to repair Bob's little BVM D9. It was having some troubles where it was losing colors, it would intermittently work, and this all came down to bad solder joints on the neck board. And as you can tell from these pictures, the solder was very bad and thankfully, Dell, also known as Delusionals Arcade, was in uh, the arcade area and had a secret solder station located behind a couple of arcade games. And I was able to go get in that solder station and actually fix this whole card for Bob. And the D9 worked perfectly after that. Uh, no problems there. It was all just an issue of that board having very poor solder. So I was happy to get that done. I did take a quick look around the floor again, just checked out those CRTs that we saw at the beginning of the show in that Ultimate Gamer Challenge. There were some people getting in on uh, that tournament then. And, but outside of that little footage you see, I actually had to pack up and head back to Virginia. So I had to go drive about seven and a half hours after uh, being at the show till I'd say 2 p.m. Uh, I had to head south so I could get back. All right, so there are a lot of things that really make these trips special. You know, you get to see some really cool setups uh, with different CRTs. You get to see some amazing arcade games, pinballs, retro game stuff. Uh, all that's great, but at the end of the day, really the best part about all of this is getting to see the people. And I had just an amazing time interacting with so many of you guys who watch the show and uh, support the channel. I really enjoyed speaking with everybody. Uh, there was just some great conversations about how many of you have become, you know, inspired to do things as far as getting into CRT repair and refurbishment and um, anything. You know, it was just great to have conversations with everybody and hear about all of your different CRTs that you own. Uh, I really have a great time and of course I love seeing everybody that is kind of in our network here I guess you'd say in retro. Um, I had a great time seeing Chris, Tito, Simeon and Lou and of course Bob and uh, everybody else that I met there for the first time it was just an awesome weekend and I hope that I can do it again next year. I'll try to do it again next year. Um, but now I've got to get ready for the next show, which is one I always do a vlog for also. So that'll be the next vlog you probably see will be for the Music City Multicon that's coming up at the end of October uh, this year and should be a lot of fun. And we'll have some more familiar faces uh, from the retro scene actually at that convention too. And again, if you really did enjoy the video, please do me a favor and hit the like button. And I will see you all next time with some more retro content.